Hello, it's me Alex. Today I am really excited because I am doing both a project pan and a collab video. I am doing this video with my friend Susan from Ready Jet Glow. I am so pumped. We are doing a problematic project pan. She and I were talking about this over Instagram after the whole Kat Von D situation kind of came into effect and happened. By the way, she has a really amazing video about that on her channel as well. She does a lot of get ready with me's and a lot of her get ready with me's are about, you know, issues like this. Like she did one explaining the Kat Von D anti-vax situation, which I think was really cool because she explained a lot of the science behind vaccines because she works as a smart sciencey person and I am a person who loves to listen to smart sciencey people. So I thought that video was wonderful and she also cares a lot about social issues in makeup and project pans and also just having fun with makeup in the midst of all of the drama about makeup and I love that she also does a lot of like tag videos and things of that nature but in the style of a get ready with me so that like talking about makeup while doing makeup and all of that fun stuff and she is just fabulous and so encouraging and intelligent and wonderful so please go check her channel out. We're talking about doing this because I have a lot of Kat Von D stuff. I also have a couple other brands that I'm including with this but like heads up, this is going to be mostly Kat Von D stuff. One of the things that I've been wanting to do in light of all of that is really work towards using up a lot of the makeup that I have of hers. Now my main problem is when stuff like this comes out about a makeup brand that I had previously supported, I do not want to use any of their products on camera or talk about them or anything of that nature. And especially when I have as much stuff as I do from Kat Von D, you know, it would be very difficult for me to not use a lot of her stuff. A lot of her stuff is holy grail items. So I just wanted to do a video where I'm kind of working through all of this and also holding myself accountable. I think one of the things about project pans and like posting them on YouTube or Instagram, for me, it's very much about accountability. Now, I'm not one to want to do a project pan much otherwise. I've done it a couple times before with friends and it was good because it got me to use up some stuff that I, you know, I'd kind of forgotten about but still liked. Right now I don't see much of a point in my life of doing a project pan unless it's something that I do really want to use up because I don't support the brand. I'm really excited for this video. So I have three brands. I will also go through kind of like what some of my goals are because I do have a lot of eyeshadow in this and I have different kinds of lipstick so I don't anticipate going through everything that I have but I do really want to make like a, enough of a good head start so that I can kind of feel more comfortable with a collection that I have and kind of paring down my collection into stuff that I would use. Well, I mean, I know without my channel, I would definitely not have as much makeup. However, you know, I will enjoy some makeup off camera that I might not necessarily put on camera. To me, there's a lot of overlap and I don't want to have like so many products that I have to restrict my usage off camera, like if I do my makeup in the morning with a problematic product and I come on camera, like after I get off work and I'm wearing that makeup, I wanna be able to put what I'm wearing in the description box and not feel any shame about it. I'm thinking what I'm actually gonna do if anything like that happens, since I am really, really gonna be trying to use up all of this stuff, I will just link this video as an explanation for like saying like, hey, yo, I don't actually support these brands, but I am trying to use it up, so that's why it's on my face. Long intro out of the way, I am going to go into this categorically for eyes, the face, and the lips, and I'm just going to get started. So I'm going to start with the one thing that I don't actually have that much of a problem with the brand, it's more the collaboration, and this is one of the main palettes that I'm going to be working on. It is the Morphe and Kathleen Lights palette. There's been a lot of drama with Kathleen Lights, mostly surrounding her usage of the N-word, and I know there are people who have forgiven her for it, but I also understand that it is not my place as a white person to forgive someone for using a racial slur. I know she's apologized for it, but again, I just don't 
don't feel particularly comfortable supporting her work right now. Other people might, that's perfectly fine but it's just not something that I feel okay doing. Also, she's like one of those people who I used to really subscribe to, but then when I decided to not because of that incident, I have discovered that I do prefer my smaller YouTubers basically anyway. So I've put this actually in a project pan before. As you can see, I've kind of gone through two shades already. This has also just been a really good and versatile palette. I'm actually excited to have this in my project pan. Well, actually I'm really excited to have all of the eye products that I do. The good thing about this, I genuinely love all of the products that I'm gonna work on panning, but this to me is a really nice versatile palette. I love kind of putting these mauve tones together for like a nice work look and I feel so I can get a good diversity of looks out of this palette so I'm excited to put this in my pan. I'm not expecting to get through every single shade but you know what I'd like to hit pan and like maybe a couple other shades in this. What I've done on my google calendar is I have put this palette and the other main palette that I'm going to be working with out I will like set them for like using this for a week, using that other palette for a week and like alternating between weeks and putting the more like colorful accent palettes in wherever I see fit with whatever I feel inspired to do. So that's kind of my main plan. I don't have that much of a beef with Morphe either. They're not my favorite, but I don't have that many issues with it. It's just, that's not why it's problematic. It's because of the racial slur issues. The other palette that I'm going to alternate with this one is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette. Now I just have actually this shade just swooshed around on my eye today. I was working today so I did a more natural look because I was very tired this morning. This is also an eyeshadow palette that I really love. Like I explained before, this is what I'm going to alternate with the Morphe palette. This week I, I actually kind of started on this a little bit early just because I wanted to uh, work through it as much as I could and give myself kind of a running start. And so this is what I've been using this week. Again, I'm not trying to use up all the shades. I would just really kind of like to make a dent in this palette as much as I can. I'm also gonna look for like some creative ways to use this palette. What I've been doing for these two, since these are going to be my main focuses, I've been looking on like Pinterest and YouTube for tutorials using these palettes so I can really get my money's worth and get as creative as possible. As I said before, one of the main reasons I'm not supporting Kat Von D is because of her anti-vaccine stance. Also, she has a pretty like racist anti-Semitic history, which I previously did know about, but my thought process was when Jeffrey Histar, when all of that came out and she kind of put him on blast, that was also her showing that she had made a change. However, that was definitely a mistake on my part because her current fiance also has uh, Nazi tattoos and all of that disgusting shit that shouldn't be happening in 2018. I also just accidentally cursed on my channel, but friggin' Nazis. So yeah, that was definitely a mistake on my part. And so I think that kind of brought to light a lot of my own privilege. I can only apologize for and do better in the future. It is my reasoning, but it's not an excuse, if that makes any sense. So uh, that is my whole feeling surrounding that situation. So I have several other eye palettes from Kat Von D. They're just not going to be my main focus, but I'm going to basically be incorporating these eye products in with these main two palettes just as much as I can. I don't expect to pan these, but I just want to work my way towards using them up so that at the end of about three months I can, you know, kind of put them to the side and not feel as much pressure in, you know, my everyday life to use them. So the first one is the Pastel Goth palette. I don't see this as a palette that would, it would be reasonable for me to actually try and use up given that like I work in a library. I should probably not be wearing all this on my face on a daily basis, but it is something that is still really fun for me to play around with. I also have the Saint and Sinner palette, which was yeah, this I think was my last purchase that I made from Kat Von D. So I'm actually really happy that I didn't decide to buy any of her new stuff in the new year because she released like the Divine Eyeshadow Pot, which I almost got. But I'm glad that I did not unintentionally add into the pile of stuff I'm trying to get out. But yeah, again, this is also something that I really love. It's a really pretty palette. I'll get a lot of use out of it. I already have been getting a lot of use out of it, hence why Sabbath and vestment both look like 
very disgusting. I'm not mad that I'm gonna be using this a lot over the next few months. Again, I don't think I'm gonna finish this by any means, but I'm gonna work towards it. And I also have a little Alchemist palette. This I could actually see myself hitting pan on one of the shades because I do really love these. I also think I will keep the packaging afterwards just because this packaging is perfect because it's the Alchemist palette. It has the A for Alex and Alchemist. So even though it's Kat Von D, I'm keeping the friggin' packaging because it is perfect room decor for me. I do really like this one. I think um, this pairs well with the with the pastel goth palette at the very least i can kind of like on my more colorful days i can just add any and all of these as like an inner corner highlight i also like pink opal for kind of a more everyday subtly weird highlight so i think i will i could see myself hitting pan on that or like amethyst so that'll be really good um if i can do that so i would love to hit pan on one of the shades in here and i also have the shade and light eye quad that i got at tj maxx in the shade Rust. This one is relatively new. Even though it's more neutral, I don't expect to hit pan on it, but at least it's a quad and I don't use quads as often. So I feel as though even if I don't like hit pan on any of the shades or even if I forget to use this completely, I won't feel bad at the end of three months because I would probably not be as tempted to use this on camera anyway. And I also have the single shadow in Iggy. Again, this is not something that I can finish, but it's something that I think I will pair with the Shade and Light Eye Palette a lot, and I'm gonna work towards finishing this one, like when I can, at some point. On to face products. I'm actually going to start off with Tarte, because I just want to change things up because I've been talking a lot about Kat Von D. So there's one that I've actually been unofficially panning since the beginning of the year when all of the Shape Tape Foundation stuff like came about. And that's the reason why I am not feeling comfortable purchasing from Tarte is because they were racist AF in terms of their Shape Tape Foundation. But I've been working on their mini blush in Party, which as you can see, I've hit a lot of pan on, so I can see myself making huge progress with this. It might not be completely finished, but like I would love to see a gigantic chunk of pan in this thing. I also have their blush in Dazzled, which I'm actually just considering throwing out because you can kind of see that it looks a bit gross in there. I've had this for about three years. I really loved it when I first got it. Whenever I swatch it now, I don't actually get that much pigment from it anymore. And while I do like a more subtle blush, what really comes off on my face is just a glitter at this point because I think I've just hit very hard pan. So I I might actually just throw this one away. I'm not trying to like get out of doing anything, but I also think that this one can literally just be thrown away. And now back to Kat Von D, your regularly scheduled anti-vaxxer. I will be working on finishing my Shade and Light contour palette. I would like to hit pan on this shade. And what I'm feeling about this, because I've already hit pan on three shades, I was planning on repurchasing this with a refillable one because this was a really good palette. I'm gonna do some shopping around for some, for a new contour palette. So my goal is to hit pan on the lightest shade and make a little bit more pan in the medium contour shade. But whatever happens, I am going to throw this out by the end of the three months simply because this has gotten really old it has gotten a lot of wear and tear on it and i've also noticed that a lot of the times when i break out one of the first places that i break out are the places that i contour on my face and i think it's simply because of the fact that I've been using this for years and years and years that it's probably so old that it might break my skin out a little bit anyway. So I feel as though it's at the end of its life anyway. So I'm just gonna work on panning this part and whatever happens, it's gone. This is one that I'm going to struggle with. This is the Kat Von D Locket Foundation. Back when I wore foundation, this was kind of my holy grail, but now I've kind of gotten to a point in my life where foundation is a lot of work for me. However, I'm going to still like try and work on what I'm probably going to do is I will use this on times for like tutorials or also for like nights out or I'm just playing around with makeup at night and wanting to do a more like avant-garde stage makeup look. 
I feel as though this would provide a really good base. As you can tell, like, I am well on my way to finishing it anyways. It was just that I stopped using it for a while because this is my summer shade and it's summer, so this would be an ideal time for me to use this as much as I can and maybe possibly hopefully use this up by the end of the three months. I also have the Kat Von D Lolita single eyeshadow blush thing. This is relatively new. I haven't used it that much, but it is really pretty. And even though I don't use it as much as a blush, I think it is a really pretty shade. Again, I'm going to incorporate it like I will with the Iggy eyeshadow single and just incorporate it into my makeup routine as much as I can. And I'm not going to put this back in my blush drawer at all for the entire of this just so I can see it out on my desk and hopefully use it. The last face product is the Kat Von D Lock It Brightening Powder in Petal. This is just a really good powder to bake with so I think that would be a really good way for me to use this up. I think this was actually made to be a powder specifically for baking so that'll be a really good way for me to just kind of get through it as fast as possible is just like cake it the frick on my face. I mean as you can see I kind of only have a little bit left. I feel so I could probably finish this up by the end of the three months. Oh and one eye product I forgot Kat Von D Incline or True Brute. This stuff would probably dry out by the end of the three months anyway so I'm not concerned this will be easy. And for lip products we have one Tarte lipstick. Again, I've been unofficially panning a lot of my Tarte products since the Shape Tape Foundation thing happened. This is in the shade Birthday Suit. Again, it's like there are many that they gave last year for like the Sephora birthday gift. So that makes me happy. I was actually before, again with this and the party blush actually, before all of the crap went down with Tarte, I was actually planning on buying a full size of both of these because this is like my perfect blush shade for someone who likes more neutral blush but still wants a tiny bit of color to my face. And I surprisingly really liked the really like this shade. I think I can still get a few more uses out of this. I still really like this shade, so I'm going to find dupes for both of these once I finish them up. This is a surprisingly really comfortable formula and I also didn't think I would like a lipstick that was like this light of a nude but it's surprisingly flattering on me. It's a tiny little thing. I'll get rid of it quick. And then I have a lipstick that I don't anticipate finishing but it will be good for me to use it more and it is a Kat Von D Studded Kiss lipstick in Solo. I call this my Donald Duck lipstick just because I feel so like when you put it on your lips you look a little Donald Duckish. Like it's really pretty and shimmery but it's just not an everyday lipstick but I'm gonna be working on this. And then the scary part, all these Kat Von D Everlasting Liquid lipsticks. So I've actually pretty much finished Lolita. The only reason I haven't thrown this away is because I'm kind of lipstick shopping to find a dupe for this because this is a really nice shade and I love it. Lolita 2, which is what I'm wearing on my lips. This one I think I will definitely have finished by the end of these three months because this is my go-to My Lips But Better nude shade. So I feel as though I will almost definitely have this one finish. Like I wear it almost every day when I don't know what else to wear, which is I'm I'm pretty certain I'm almost done with this one too. It feels almost as light as Lolita does. So I think I could get maybe two more uses out of this and I have already bought another black lipstick anyway and I should be wearing black lipstick more because it's super cute. So I anticipate finishing this one definitely. Nosferatu, I think I can also finish. It's a pretty, it's this really pretty red, but this one is also feeling pretty light. So this one, I'm feeling good about it. Project Chips, not as light as the other, so I don't know if I'll be able to finish this or not, but I do really like this shade, and this, this lipstick is one of the re I mean, obviously I'm sad about, like, Kat Von D being an anti-vaxxer because of, like, all of the major public health issues that, like, anti-vax moms and also racists cause, but, you know, I like that this shade goes, like, the proceeds go to charity to help stop animal testing, and I also really love this color, but I found a dupe for it, which I will mention later on, and I will work on this as much as I can. These last two, who knows about, I have Suspiria and Dreamer. So these are both feeling about the same weight, and since they're kind of weird looking colors, I don't know if I'll be able to finish them, but I had actually seen Georgia Harris on her Instagram, like she did a look where she covered her face in Kat Von D lip liners, and I'm kind of considering doing something similar with these to just kind of 
kickstart my way into uh, finishing these because I don't see like I could wear these to like church or like any non-work situation. They're not something that I would wear to work or every day so these might not go as fast as the others. These are all of the products that I'm trying to finish up. I actually have a little spreadsheet going that is just kind of going to keep track of the products that I'm trying to finish up and also like if I'm going to dupe them, what I'm thinking is during the finale, I will share some of the products that I'm duping these products with so that y'all can have some alternatives because a lot of these products are stuff that I regularly wear and that I've kind of gotten used to wearing over the years. And so if I find good alternatives, good dupes for them, I am definitely going to share them with y'all because I'm sure that y'all probably have some of these things as your holy grails too. I think that covers pretty much about everything. I. I think I've included all of the products that I need to. Obviously, it's a lot. I've told you the things that I have a feeling I'm gonna be able to go through and the things that I have a feeling I won't be able to go through. And that to me isn't about like, I'm not trying to make excuses for what I'm going to use and what I'm not going to use. I'm just more setting realistic expectations for myself. One of the things that I've struggled with with Project Pans in the past is that I got to be really unrealistic about a lot of things. And with this one, I don't wanna set myself up for failure in thinking that, oh yeah, I can totally use all of these products because I sure as heck can't. Like I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but I, I don't think I could use up this liquid lipstick in three months if Jesus wanted me to. On that note, please go check out Susan's video. I'm sure she's also going to be amazing. She also has products from other brands that have become problematic too. So like we're getting all diverse up in here with our various feelings about various problematic products. Let me know down below if there's anything that you're trying to use up in light of all of this. And thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe down below if you want to see more videos from me. And I'll see you on my next one. Hope you'll have a wonderful day. Bye.